The accounts will simply say his or her gun or rifle has been taken away from him or her. When jet me through Africa, so. There are also people who are born and they are called the diacon in their camp concept, which means come and battle, come and struggle. It means that the moment you are born, the battle starts. In other words, it means the purpose of life is to contend, is to struggle, is to fight. In reality, as we live normally in our lives, we have financial battles, family battles, health battles, spiritual battles, reputational battles, political battles, and many others. Daily, we are in a battle. We are always struggling to make meaning of each day, of each moment of our life. The question is, are Christians exempted or are, are they insulated from this? No! Christians also struggle with their fears, with their flaws, with their guilt, with their regrets. Some of them struggle with their addictions, disappointments, and sometimes they even struggle with their own credibility and identity crisis. The Bible seems to approve or endorse the Ghanaian phenomenon that life is a struggle. In Genesis chapter 3 verse 17, that is where it is said that all the life that Adam would live will be a struggle. Genesis 3 17 says, God said to Adam, all your life you will struggle. Now, therefore, let us turn to the Bible to see what it says about handling the struggles and the battles of life, which is a reality to us. I want us to turn our attention to 2 Samuel chapter 12, and we'll look at verses 13 to 25. 2 Samuel 12, 13 to 25, and I read, Then David confessed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, Yes. But the Lord has forgiven you, and you won't die for this sin. Nevertheless, because you have shown utter contempt for the word of the Lord, by doing this, your child will die. After Nathan returned to his home, the Lord sent a deadly illness to the child of David and Uriel's wife. David begged God to spare the child. He went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. The elders of his household pleaded with him to get up and eat with them, but he refused. Then on the seventh day, the child died. David's advisors were afraid to tell him. He wouldn't listen to reason while the child was ill, they said. What drastic thing would he do when we tell him the child is dead? When David saw them whispering, he realized what had happened. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied. He is dead. Then David got up from the ground, washed himself, put on lotions, and changed his clothes. He went to the tabernacle and worshipped the Lord. After that, he returned to the palace and was served food and ate. His advisors were amazed. We don't understand you, they told him. While the child was still living, you wept and refused to eat. But now that the child is dead, you have stopped your mourning and are eating again. David replied, I fasted and wept while the child was alive, for I said, perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. But why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and slept with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and David named him Solomon. The Lord loved the child and sent word through Nathan the prophet that they should name him Jedidiah, which means beloved of God, as the Lord has commanded. The word of God. Today we want to look at battling or struggling with God. We want to also look at battling with yourself. Battling with yourself. And lastly, we want to look at 
battling with others, battling with others. And last, and we also want to look at battling with paralysis, battling with paralysis, battling with God, battling with yourself, battling with others, and battling with paralysis. Struggling with God, struggling with yourself, struggling with others, and struggling with paralysis. First, struggling with God. Complain to God in your struggles. Lodge an official complaint to God. You see, the story we read from uh, the Bible tells us very clearly that David took Bathsheba, uh, Bathsheba who is Uriah's wife, and then killed Uriah and took Uriah's wife, which was a sin before God. And when he did that, God sent Nathan the prophet to tell him that because of what he has done, God is not happy with him. And God is going to take the life of the child that comes from that particular sin that he has done with Bathsheba. But when the child was born, the child was ill. And when the child got ill, David then complained to God about it to say God I really don't understand this why should this happen so when you read uh, verse 15 of uh, second uh, second uh, uh, Samuel chapter 12 that we read verse 15 of second Samuel uh, chapter 12 it says after Nathan returned to his home the Lord sent a deadly illness to the child of David and Uriah's wife David begged God to spare the child he went without food and lay all night on the bare ground. The elders of his household pleaded with him to get up and eat with them, but he refused. David appealed to God. He complained to God to spare the innocent life of the child. I'm sure David will be saying, God, what has this child done? The child has not done anything. He might even say, kill me rather. So he complained, he appealed, God, can you spare the life of this church? The Bible says he begged, he appealed, he complained. And he went on a hunger strike for days, just to protest to God that God is taking an innocent life. This is important. Whenever we get into a struggle, battles of life, we need to know that the first thing we have to do is to go to God and complain to him in prayer by crying to him. Jesus battles with God by saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Job says in Job chapter 13 that I am going to appeal my case with him. I'm going to appeal my case before God. Because he knows that the situation that he, as Job, is in, there is no other person to complain to than God. Job 13, 23 also says, Job was talking to God and what he said was, tell me, what have I done wrong? Go to God and ask him. Go directly to God. Then in Job 13, 24, he says, why, why? He asks the why question. The why question that Job is asking is, God, why have you turned your face away from me? Just like, Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Complain to God in prayer. And this is Jesus praying to God and complaining to God. My God, my God, why have you so forsaken me? Job says, my God, why have you turned your face away from me? Struggle, struggle with God. Don't struggle on your own. Don't let somebody struggle for you. Complain to God directly. When you have a problem, complain to God. All these people were complaining to God. Jesus was complaining to God. Jonah was complaining to God. And David was actually complaining to God. So when you have an issue, go to God. God is not afraid of your complaints. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19 says, The sovereign Lord is my strength. It is when you complain to God, then you draw strength from Him. Struggle with God until you prevail. Tell God what you think is unfair and painful. Complain to God, complaining to God is an act of worship. 
It's an act of worship. When you read Lamentations and you read the Psalms, a lot of complaints, but they are all acts of worship to God. Because when you go to God in complaint, to complain to Him, there are things you do. You try to actually let God know that this is what it says, what you are not happy about. You tell, you, you, you tell God that you, God, you are uh, this uh, person who I know who can do wonderful things. As, uh, uh, tell God that this is what your situation is. Then also try to remind God of his promises. Remind God. God, you promise you do this one. You promise you, you do this one. Then also, after reminding him of his promises, try to also remind God of his nature. God, you are loving, you are kind, you are generous, you are merciful. You know, these things would are the things that you, you go to God and complain, and then God would be able to strengthen you in your time of struggle. He says, in your time of trouble, call on me. Two, battle or struggle with yourself to the point of acceptance. Second Samuel 12, 19 says, when David saw them whispering, he realized what had happened. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied, he is dead. You need to accept what cannot be changed in your life. Some struggles will definitely be over in a negative way. But if it's over, it is over. There is no need to continue in denial or hoping against hope. There are things that when they have, they, they, they've done, it is done. You can't, you can't, you can't, re, re, you can't reinvent the wheel. You can't go back to it. The thing has happened. The, the person is dead. He cannot come back to life. I remember one day, uh, one of my, my members came to me when one of our members had passed on and was in the mortuary that he went to one of these uh, prayer centers and he gave her bracelet, hand bracelet, a plastic bracelet that he should go, uh, he should bring it to me, I should take it to the mortuary, put it around the, 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 the wrist of the dead person and that man of God said, he will come back to life. I looked at the face of the sister of the, the person who is dead and I realized that the person is living in denial. She cannot accept that it is over. When it is over, it is over. The past goal, which was bad, was over. So you need a new goal. Tell yourself it is not the end of the story. There are better things here to come. Hallelujah. Whatever you are going through, accept it. Just like uh, 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 this thing, uh, 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 David accepted the situation that the child, the first child from Bathsheba was dead. It will, it will not come back. He says that child is, is, is dead and it's over. He cannot come back to life. I can go to him. Thirdly, struggling with others is also very important. But then, when you are struggling with others, what should be at the back of your mind is that you should take good care of yourself. Struggling with others by taking good care of yourself. In verse 20 of 2nd Samuel chapter 12, it says, then David got up from the ground, washed himself, put on lotions, and changed his clothes. His advisors were amazed. Why don't, don't, why, why? We don't understand what you've done. When the child was dying, you were not eating. You went on hunger strike, and you, 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 you didn't bath, you didn't do anything. But David's answer is, I fasted and wept, in verse 22, he says, I fasted and wept while the child was alive. For I said, perhaps the Lord will be gracious to me and let the child live. But why should I fast when he is dead? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him one day, but he cannot return to me. Struggle intentionally with those who want to take your desire of looking nice, be looking fresh, eating properly, sleeping properly away from him. Hit the ground running. Don't actually, because of what has happened, you, you, you become so lousy, you don't bath, you don't brush your teeth, you don't look nice again, your hair is all in a mess, your face is in a mess, everything. You don't even know how to wear your sandals well. 
And people sometimes, traditions would make you feel so. There are some practices that dictate that when you have lost a good one, you shouldn't eat, you shouldn't dress properly, you shouldn't go out, you shouldn't do makeup and all those things. Get a life. These are struggles. The tradi traditions are struggles you go through. Especially widows go through these things and widowers. These are traditions you have to go through. And this is a struggle that we as Christians need to go through to be able to let them know that for freedom, Christ has set us free. And once we, we can get into the struggles, they will come. But we know Christ is with us in those struggles. And in those struggles that we are struggling, when we have handed the struggles to God, we don't need to live a life that shows that we can't take care of ourselves. Take care of yourself. If you have lost an appetite, pray that God will give you an appetite. If you, don't, you have lost the interest of looking nice, let God rekindle in you the life that he has given you. God has given you a life, and that life is an abundant life. With all the struggles, abundance of life is still available to you as your portion. So take good care of yourselves, and don't let others put you down by their traditions and by, by whatever they want you to be doing. Fourth, you struggle with unproductivity and paralysis. You see, when you get into a struggle, you are paralyzed. Sometimes in our traditions, whenever there's a bereavement, they say you should shut, shut, your, shut your shop, stop, don't go work again, stay at home, uh, don't go to work, uh, you know, don't do business again, uh, and all the, don't transact business again, don't go to your office, don't do the normal things that you do. They even say, don't even come to church. You become very unproductive, passive. You are almost living but dead because of what has happened. 2 Samuel 12, 20 B.C. He went to the tabernacle and worshipped the Lord. After that, he returned to the palace and was served food and ate. He refocused on worshipping God and he went back to work. David was the king, so he cannot share his responsibilities because of his personal struggles. You can't share your responsibilities because of your personal struggles. Your business cannot completely fail because of your, your struggles that you're going through. You cannot share your family responsibilities because of what you are going through. You cannot share your responsibilities at church because of what you are going through. May God lift you up so that you become productive again. You need to go back to your productive self and task. You need to gather your, your scattered self together and start working again. Don't wallow in self-pity too long. Get moving. Start worshipping God. Start having the joy of your salvation. And start work. Because those people who say you shouldn't work, they will not be feeding you. You need to be productive. Find some productive thing to do, even in your struggles. Fifthly, struggle with hurt, hatred, guilt, and then get to love. Second uh, Samuel 12, 24 says, Then David comforted Bathsheba, his wife, and slept with her. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And David named him Solomon. The Lord loved the child and sent word through Nathan the prophet that they should name him Jedidiah, which means beloved of the, of the Lord. He says in 2 Samuel 12, 24, that David loved and he slept with her again. And then they gave birth to a child. 1 John 3, 16 says, We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. You love when you don't feel like laughing, that is about struggles. When you are struggling, don't squeeze your face. Don't get to a situation where everybody sees you and as if the whole world is, is tumbling down your face. Laugh again. Laugh again. Be happy again. Keep on loving in your pain, in spite of your pain. When you laugh till it hurts, then there will be no more hurts. 
but all love. We need to rekindle our love for others, irrespective of the fact that we are hurting, irrespective of hatred around us and guilt around us, we need to come back to love. Because they say that after all these, David loved his wife and went back, slept with Bathsheba, and they gave birth to a child. And that was Solomon, who became one of the greatest kings that ever lived. Your struggles will be turned into opportunities for you. May we see this. And when we are going through struggle, look at the positive things that will come out of it. The past which is with us is our struggles, but the future is brighter than the past. May we go through our struggles knowing that our Lord God who has called us is able to take us through. Let us continually appeal to God directly. Don't let anybody do it for you. And when you go into the battle, battle with yourself in terms of the things that you yourself have entangled yourself with. And tell yourself, it is not the end of your story. It is just the beginning. And accept the realities around you of battle because life is war. Battle with others and take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. Whenever you go into it, don't let people push you down. Rise from your struggle. And don't also get into paralysis. In your, in your struggles, let productivity be your portion. Rise up and do something. Go to church, worship God, take your responsibilities as David did. Went to the tabernacle and worshiped. And he went back to the palace and sat at his desk and, 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 and served his people. May God grant you that freedom, that liberty, that release, that redemption to go on, to do the work of God, even in this world of struggles. Amen. God richly bless you for listening to me. And I want to pray for you in your struggles. Lord, I want to thank you for the struggles that we all go through. I pray for whoever is listening to me, whatever struggles he's going through, be it identity, be it the loss of a dear one, a loss of a job, or something that has been denied of, or disappointment, or illness. I pray that, Lord, you will let that person go through it and the opportunities that you have for that person, may that person gain those opportunities. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for listening to me. This is Reverend Professor Alan. And I know that God has blessed you richly for listening to me this Sunday. And I hope you make a date again with me next Sunday and any Sundays that you are free to listen to me at 7.30 a.m. Shalom.